So as you can see, we've come to these open areas at Chitwa, and there is just game everywhere. There's impalas all spread around. They're all busy feeding and making use of these beautiful open clearings that have been cut, I think. It looks like it, that they've been mowed down. So often they do mow on the edge of the runway just to kind of keep it open so that they can see if there's any animals around that don't run out onto the runway before the plane lands. So, But you can hear lots of little babies calling to their mom as well. That's such a amazing sound that they make. There you go. Oh, you lost, little one. So it's little here in front it's busy. Making up. I think it's looking for its mother at this stage. It's such an amazing noise that they make. You wouldn't expect that to come out of a little antelope and especially when the males start going into the rut and they produce that very guttural um, growling sound that we hear that almost sounds like lions fighting. You wouldn't think that a small little pretty antelope like this would be able to produce such sound. I'm pretty sure most of these impalas are going to start moving into some shady area because all of a sudden the sun has got very warm there's a cool breeze blowing, but the sun itself is now quite hot and it's getting a little bit warm to be in the sun, so I think everything is going to go shade. You can actually see a lot of them are moving into the shade as we speak. They're going into those nice little combretum thickets, which is perfect for Impala. And they're spending most of their time here now because it's mowed. It's also nice and open, as well as there's nice fresh short grass. So I would imagine that this is going to be a hive of activity for zebras and wildebeest. We're going to find a lot of them coming this way. And even maybe waterbuck, you'll find some of them here. Possibly a few rhinos too, which is quite nice. Did it find its mother there, Bim? No. Still not. Shame. Maybe its mother has been taken by something. Oh, we've got two males fighting here in front. So this is now the start of this rutting process. We're going to soon be having the rut. It'll be around April is when it normally starts. And then the males are going to be highly competitive. So what this is, is just basically training. It's like getting into the gym before doing a Olympic event. They lock horns like that and push each other around a little bit just to kind of practice and to get their technique right and make sure that they develop those neck muscles so that when they do compete properly that they're able to then win and get themselves a nice little herd of females. Now there was a whole bunch of zebra that have also just come running down. So I was saying earlier that this will attract zebra and there you go. They came flying out of the bush for some reason they don't look too perturbed they are busy moving straight towards the open area also in front of us is a giraffe and its little one too so a whole bunch of animals all in one place I think everybody's using this nice open clearing to be able to oh hello well spotted Vim Look at that. Ah, Mike, you're asking if there's a reason why zebra and impala are always together. Well, it's just brought about by the environment that they like to utilize. So both of them are animals that are preyed upon quite heavily. And so they both will move into more open clearings and open sections to be able to avoid predation. So much easier to spot lions, leopards, cheetah, wild dogs in big open clearings like this than it is in the thickets. And so at the end of the day, they'll rather come and congregate in these areas. And that's why you find zebra and, and impalas often in the same place. Also, zebras are short grass feeders, so they like short grass open areas that's generally the habitat that they like to be in anyway so that's why you get this mix of them in the same area also wildebeest they'll be around quite a bit in these sections too so you often find a ze zebra herd with a lonely wildebeest male and impalas in the sabi sands if you go into other parts of kruger then you find groupings of zebra and wildebeest together and it's all just because of the type of terrain that they like and the type of food that they like you can see the 
Everybody's a little nervous of their running impalas. These guys are not quite as relaxed as the McCurdy Herdy. So we need to send Taylor this way and get her working on habituating this lot as well. And the little baby giraffe, quite cute. So the reason why the giraffe is here is it may be a little bit different. Because this baby is still very small, it's very susceptible to predation. Um, so hyenas in particular are a real big problem for baby giraffe in this area. And so it's probably come here to lie at night to be able to see what's going on and for the baby to be able to sleep and sit down and be able to rest and allow that time for the little one to rest those legs. And then in the mornings they stand up and they'll start moving into the more shaded treed areas where they can go and feed because remember giraffe are not going to be able to feed on this grass they need to find a tree that they can busy that they can feed off and so they'll just use this as a night point and a resting point and then back into the thickets during the day when there's less predators moving around and looking for prey items but isn't that amazing nice screenshot there if you like doing screenshots three species in one shot always quite pleasant very, very nice, but it's turning out to be a beautiful day. The sun has come up now, clouds are shifting out. There is a little bit of a cool breeze, and it's got that very autumn, wintry feel to it. The breeze is quite cold, but the sun is beautiful and warm. So, very, very, very nice. It's a nice. Oh, zebra's lying down in the road. Is it going to have a little roll? Let's see. So, they often do this. You'll find the zebras utilize these areas and they roll around in the dust, and it's exactly the same as. What the elephants do, when both myself and James this morning have seen the elephants throwing dust all over themselves, and it's for the same reason that the zebras roll around in the dust. It's all just to keep their skin in good condition and to try and make themselves look as good as possible. And that's why you often find zebras will take on the color of the terrain that they're in. So if they're in an area like this where the soil is quite light, then you get a light sort of tinge to them. But if you go to places where you get a very clay soil that's very red, and the zebras roll around in it, they take on a red sort of hue. It's quite interesting actually. And you see it's a lot in parts of East Africa, so we were going to the Mara, but the Mara doesn't quite have it. If you go a little bit further to the east and into Savo National Park, there they have very clay soils and the zebras there are quite red in coloration. It's it's quite interesting to see and even the elephants. The elephants take on a sort of clay red coloration as well. I think that one's going to have a little nap. It's not doing any rolling. Oh, there we go. So I know the other day Brent was also doing this. He was rolling about in a zebra roll. And it was quite funny because he came back and everyone was like, Oh, Brent, you're going grey. And he had had some white fur from the zebras that was stuck in his hair. And it looked like he was about to get a grey hair, which would have been dire for Brent's vanity. Now, we're going to carry on and let these all graze and browse very peacefully and while we do that let's go 